introduce you, first of all, great to see him back with the club, Dean Moxie. <laughs> Our captain, Jordan Moore-Taylor. Of course, our manager of how many seasons is it now? Four, eleven, something like that. But, yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to hand the microphone over to our manager to uh, set out the scene for our season ahead, and then it's going to be open house. Ask any questions you want to Paul or to, uh, to Jordan or Dean. But let's first of all welcome our manager, Paul Tisdale. <laughs> happen in a year and uh, who knows what's going to happen in the next 12 months but uh, I've just been asked uh, in the last half an hour I'm looking forward to the new season and I am. I mean you, you cannot be involved in professional football if you're not looking forward to a new season so I think we're all gearing up for Saturday I think people are starting to talk about the new season uh, I know ticket sales are on the up and everyone's <coughs> thinking about Saturday afternoon and we, we certainly are but it's been a long 12 months since this time last year when we reported back for pre-season and started the season. Um, we had a fabulous year, it uh, came so so very close but it was, a, it was a wonderful year to be part of and uh, um, we're just very much looking forward to starting again this year. And it's my 12th year so it's, 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 it's flown by and when we sold Dean to Derby County in 2009 I didn't for one minute think that Dean would be coming back to play Exeter and I was doing the manager and you, you, just, you just don't sort of, you know, you look to those sort of time frames of football, it's always next Saturday, it's always maybe next month, sometimes it's Christmas or the end of the season, but you so rarely look that far ahead and I think we're at a point at Exeter where we, 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 we've, we've got in the habit of planning and having some kind of structure at the club that enables us to do that. It's great to have Dean back. There's something about left-footed local players who seem to produce one after the other and uh, Dean was one of them, Jordan left with the player. We've had so many that have come through the ranks and represented the club so well I'm sure we'll have a lot more in the years to come. It's wonderful to have Dean back with us. Um, not sure how long it will be before Dean's back on the pitch but it's very soon um, and uh, it would be great to have him back in a red and white shirt in the uh, in the, in the in the next couple of weeks, so uh, I'm sure you'll be very pleased to see him play. Again, uh, Jordan <coughs> has been captain now for is it two seasons, or is it three? I've lost count. Is it two seasons? Two, two seasons. Um, led the team out at Wembley, which must be a highlight for any, any player. The captain is the local team out at Wembley, which was a big moment for him. But more importantly, as I said to the player on the first day back at pre season, back in almost six weeks ago now, we reported back for training. and. Uh, Last week, last week, last season was only a waste if we don't, don't then move on this year and achieve promotion. So, although we came so close and it was so disappointing at the end, actually it's not wasted if we have that in our mind that our job this year is to go one step further. It, it'll be no mean feat and it's certainly not a guarantee, but that's our target and uh, we start that this Saturday against Cambridge. So. There's been one or two developments of the club over the past um, few months. There's certainly, you know, we're just looking through the window, you can see there's a there's a change to the uh, to the view um, with the development of the grandstand. And uh, David Lee actually stood behind the bar of there. One of the directors has been um, right in the middle of that for three years. Done a wonderful job. It's taken three years to get to that point where we're now up and running. So I just want to say thank you much to David. Maybe give him a to happen um, with Exeter City overnight. There's a lot of work that needs to go in and that's what happens when you have a, an organisation that is very thorough, uh, very considered and, uh, and very careful. Um, we've done everything right to make sure that the next step here at St James's Park is done correctly. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing the, the, uh, uh, the results over the next 12 months. Um, I'm sure we don't want to talk too much about uh, um, what's gone on before, we need to talk about what's going on in the future, but as always I'm, I'm very happy to take questions, I'm sure 
the boys are as well. Um, so if there are questions you'd like to ask of us, then we're more than happy to answer them. Um, so if, if someone would, Mark, do you want to do the sort of ask, or do you want to just ask? Yeah, well, just go ahead. Show of hands, and there we are. <laughs> nice to see you, how are you? Yeah, all right. I just want to know, with Dean coming back, I'm chuffed he is, where are you seeing him playing, because Woodman had such a good season, how are you seeing those two, are they fighting for the place, or are you seeing Dino more on the wing, or <laughs> left back? Or <laughs> 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 we got Dino's. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know, I know that, Jack Sparks uh, coming through, that, yeah. I, I, I don't know actually, I haven't thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's, it's actually a good question, <laughs> it's, what, it's what's called a high quality problem in football terms. So you need to build a squad, we, we have seen from last year, um, the course of last year, you probably remember when we were bottom of the league and things were turning sour that I kept on about this is the best squad of players I've had in a long, long time. And it was because of the depth and the ability of the squad, albeit half of them were injured, that we had for the first time at my disposal. And you know, ultimately, those players were back fit for a long enough period of time that we were able to mount a challenge on promotion. We will not go beyond a mid-table position if we cannot have a competitive long squad of good quality players who are all competing for, for, for places. And the, the teams that we have at Exeter, it's not just a conventional 4-4-2 that plays the same way every week. It's always flexible, it's always adaptable, you get players on the pitch. And actually if you look at, the biggest challenge for us is going to be August, September, October. We play, we play an enormous amount of matches. And it's actually unfair a lot of time on, on lower league, league one and two clubs to play that many games in such a short space of time. And you always run the risk of injury. So the, the, the perfect scenario for me is having a squad that I can rotate and keep as many players fit as possible and get through that period in a good, strong position. We have got a very strong left side of the pitch. Last year we were probably a little bit weak on that side. We didn't have too, enough cover. We have now got some very good players. As, as any football manager would tell you, competition for places is, is what you look for. And competition of the right type of, pe of people and players. We've got that. Dean is, is, is recovering from a, a long-term injury. He'll be back very soon. Craig Woodman, Dean, Lee Holmes, Jack Sparks, Luke Kroll, there's Ryan Harley. We've got players that can play on the left-hand side. We'll have to fight it out and have an arm wrestle or two and then we'll, <laughs> we'll pick the team. But, uh, Dean's a player who can play two or three, four positions which is the beauty of an Exeter City player coming through the ranks. They're always asked to be adaptable and play different positions. So I don't yet know. We'll see how it works out. But Dean can play a number of positions and uh, he'll always do what he's asked to do. And that's why we brought him back. He's a terrific player and uh, he wants to play for the club. <coughs> Who else Dean where he wants to play? Right wing. I'll play wherever Paul puts me. He said, I'll, I'll do what I can for the team in any position I'm put, so. Do you have a preference? Uh, when, I, when I left here, all I played is left back, really. Left, left wing back last season a bit, but left back has been my main position, and it always has been, really, but I like to push forward and, and try and help out as much as I can there, so. I'll do, like, like Paul said, I'll do as I'm told. <laughs> <laughs> If we recall the seasons that Dean were here, was here uh, before he left, I mean, he played left back, he played left wing back, he played left of a five across midfield in the season. We got promoted at Wembley and went to League uh, League One, and you know, and then he went to Derby. But he played all sorts of positions. I think he played front for Derby, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> next question. <laughs> um, what was the main reason you didn't buy Jack Stacey last season? The budget had been spent. Is that it, is it? Yeah. I was, I was just spoke to him at the last game and he... We'd love to have kept want, him. He wanted to stay. Yeah, we'd, love to, we'd love to have kept him, we'd love to have kept Bobby, we'd love to keep Joel, but... The, budgets, the budget was the same, we haven't made a sale, so we cannot spend money we haven't got. Um, and now, if we are, you know, we, we haven't got the, the depth of squad that we had at the end of last year. And that's just because we didn't have the money to do it, and that's the way the club is modelled and we'd be respectful of that and you know Luke were very quick in to, to, to pay the money for Jack and I'd love to have done it had I had the chop the chance. Jack would have stayed, so would Bobby I'm sure. Um, but we just couldn't do it. Shame but we just couldn't do it. 
talking about money, have we had any news from Chelsea? Um, it's a very difficult pro process. It's a, it's a, it's sort of uncharted territory for us. It's a, it's a player of that level who's gone to a, one of those clubs, and I'll be careful what I say because it still may go to a legal, legal situation. But um, Ethan had the opportunity to leave at that point. We, we, we didn't sell him. He, he didn't sign his scholarship forms. He wanted to leave. He, he had the pick of so many clubs as you can imagine. He chose Chelsea. And then you're in a situation where we either we either agree on a on a fee with Chelsea, and that's an ongoing process as we speak. But now they've got him, they're probably not going to offer the sort of figures we want. So, you know, it, it'll either be settled shortly with an agreement between the two clubs, or it'll go to tribunal, and that'll be set in the future, um, maybe not straight away, and we'll have a tribunal situation where we'll sit down, Chelsea will sit down, and there'll be a fee that's was given and Chelsea will be uh, asked to pay that money. So it, it's, we really don't know. We, we know how good Ethan is, <coughs> and how good he will be, and we have to hope that we can either get an offer from Chelsea that we see is appropriate, or we get the right figure with the tribunal. And we're, we're open-minded either way. Um, it just means at the moment we cannot, we cannot spend money until we know what we've got. And uh, we, we know we're gonna get something. Um, we'll be hope for, for yeah. The, uh, the high amount, but we don't know yet. How does that change now that we've sold all in? Is that what impact will that have on the playing budget, say, this season? Will it have any impact? It's a good question. So the, the gentleman's asked about the playing budget. We spent the budget, but now we've sold all in. I think what we have to, what we have to, it was a very, a very good question to answer at this point in time. Let's assume, let's assume we have no sales, we have no game against Liverpool, we have none of these what we call windfall sums of money that land in the club, cash lump sums, and we just work on the business of the club, which is turnstile money, sponsorship, uh, money from central funding we get from the league. We basically take that money, I'll turn over our, our, our costs, and we're left with a playing budget. That playing budget would put us right at the bottom of the league term in terms of, it's probably the bottom three or four in terms of the competitive rate. So that's our base budget. Uh, so with no, no extras, we're in that sort of those sort of those sort of um, areas. We've had over the last two or three years some very good moments. We've had the sale of Matt Grant to Swansea, we've had the Liverpool game. You put that into the mix, and the last two years we've had almost 50% more than our base budget in terms of what is put onto the pitch. Our performance budget for me to select players, sign players, pay players, give them new contracts. We've had a, almost a 50% rise in our that budget. That's lasted for two years. We're coming to, we've just come to the end of that. Now, we've got all sorts of things going on with the development of the grandstand, other bits and pieces that are ongoing cost of the club, but we want to put every penny we can onto the pitch. The Ollie Watkins sale probably keeps us where we've been. I mean, we could chuck all that money into six months, but that's not really going to do the club much good over a long period of time. But it's been, it will be wisely spent, it will be spread over a period of time, which allows us to have some kind of ongoing health. So, the sale of Ollie Watkins is part of that. What it does, it keeps us where we are. It keeps us where we are. So the budget has been spent, but that's off the back of Ollie Watkins. So for the next two or three years, we have now got the same kind of health we've just enjoyed for the previous two years. There's no more money just dropping in. We, we were already spending at that kind of rate off the back of those two years of, of good health. And now what we've done now is we've maintained that for another two or three years. So that's, what's, that's, that's where we are with it. Exactly that. So it's the same, roughly the same budget we've had the last couple of years, um, which is why we've got a similar kind of size score, albeit one or two players less, because player salaries increase gradually as they go through their contracts. Um, so we are where we are, and that's the model of the club. That's where, that's where we are at the moment. So we either sell more players to create more money, or we have another payday with the Liverpool FA Cup game, or whatever it is, in order to change our status. So we're probably mid-table in terms of how competitive our budget is in League Two. We're probably mid-table as we stand. Without the wins for money, without the, the health of the last couple of years, we're probably two, uh, bottom three or four in the, in the league. That's probably where we stand. So it, I, I would say the clubs are extremely well over the past four or five years to come from the point where we're struggling to now, and to gain the health we've got, I think it's been a really, really, really strong performance right through the club from board <coughs> down to the playing side. Oh. 
You're very happy, obviously, with the left-hand side of the field. It's very competitive. How does it make the right-hand side? Not strong. As I answered with a gentleman, I'd love to have, I'd love to have kept what Jack Stacey see, yeah. or signed someone else, but we'll just have to make do at the moment. Right. And it's the same way we, we spoke about what you're going to do on the, the left-hand side. I've got an abundance of players on the right-hand side. It sort of picks itself, which is great. There's no, there's no headache for me. But if you get an injury or two, then I've got a problem. So in the first couple of weeks, everyone's fit. I might be quite pleased I've got no problems to have on that right-hand side. But you get an injury or two, then you've got... People fill in, I and mean, that's the problem we got into last September, September, October. Every week we had to pick a different permutation to get 11 players on the field. And it wasn't until we had that continuity that we started picking up our, our, our results. You're absolutely right, it's, it's, it's not as strong as the left, but this is exercise that's way it goes. <laughs> do you have a little bit of the budget just in case you do have a problem on that right? Because, like, usually you go a couple of months, don't you? And then if something happens, you just... Or people can't do that because of the transfer windows. We just get past all yeah, this. Yeah, that's what I mean. I, I have to say, I mean, look, we have to be very careful with the money, but the, the, the board has always been extremely good in trying to do their best. They want the same thing as you want and I want, which is the best players on the pitch. And we have to do it the Exeter way, and we're very careful. And if we've had a problem, if we've got issues... Last year, we had, we had problems in August, and the club put their hands in the coffers and got Jack Stacey and Luke Cron. So I, I can't ask any more than that. We, we, are, we are what we are, and when we really need it, they find a way. But the difference to that than just adding more and more and more when you know you, th you think you're strong enough. So it's about getting the balance right. So yes, they will, I'm sure, if I have to, but I'm not asking yet because you know, we are okay, and I hope we'll be okay. So what's, what's the sort, now you've come back from eight years ago, what's the biggest difference you've seen with what's here? Um, I think the standard of the training ground has changed a lot since I left. Um, when I left we were training on basically mud and it was not great. Now we've got the uh, 4G, 3, 3G, 4G, that's fantastic down the bottom. And the, the actual standard of the pitches as well has been fantastic. So that's the main difference so far. I've not had a chance to play out the train or play on the pitch yet, so I don't know that yet. And it's a different pitch again from when you left, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is, yeah. It be like, yeah. It was always down this left down side always turned into a bog and I've, I've noticed that doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah. yeah. Get on this one. Question for, for Dean, what attracted you back to Anglia rather than other clubs you could have due to the summer? Um, well, my, my wife and kids were moving back anyway to get my kids sorted in, in schools and uh, I got a text from Taggy saying that Paul's looking for a left back. And uh, yeah, my, my agent gave me the call. Left-sided player. Left-sided player. Left-sided player. That's all the time. Yeah, my agent gave uh, Paul, Paul a call and uh, took it from there. And yeah, I was offered um, other clubs, but they were, I was gonna have to live away from my family and that's not something I wanted to do and when Exeter came in it was always something I wanted to, I wanted to come home. I didn't want to come back when I was 36, 37 just to finish my days. I wanted to come here if I had to start or something, not just pick up my money. At the end of last season when you had your retain list, you had about, I don't agree with quite a few players who, you didn't know if you could assign them on, they accept terms. As far as I know, we've heard nothing. They all seem to be playing still here. Is there any, is that news that they shouldn't be having, or are they all signed, or what's the situation? Which particular player, sorry? Well, there's a whole group of them, like Troy, etc., who didn't accept the contract at the time, they were up to the season. The question where they got to stay, whether they going to accept terms? Um, all those players that are training with us, that are with us in the club photograph and uh, are signed for us, I, mean, I think, the, I think the, one, the, the problem you have, it might, it, might, it might seem a bit misty when you look at it from the outside, the problem you have is you finish the season, you have a certain day as a manager, you have to put, you have to, you've got a list, a squad list, and you have to, you have to put a, a player into a certain box. S signed, on contract, released, or for terms. There's no box which says, we don't quite know yet. <laughs> you've got to put it in one of, the two, in one of the three. So what you get is you've got to be fair to the players. Players on contract will be there, listed. The players you release are there, it's obvious. 
than the ones which, bearing in mind I was having that conversation with them on the Tuesday after Wembley, <coughs> where you, you're not going to have that conversation before Wembley, you go to Wembley, then you're also coming on, on to work on one day off, and you're coming on the Tuesday, and you sit there, and I've got to make a decision. I don't know quite what the budget's going to be. I don't know the ongoing contract. It's, it's an absolute, it's such a pickle. And you don't know, you don't know how it's all going to go. And you, you just have to go through the list. You speak to players. You say we'd like to keep you, but at what price? It's not a case of just signing the player. It's what he'll accept. So what you do is you have to say there's two or three that have to say offered terms. And that's because you've not, not yet decided, or they've not yet decided. And that's because there's no list saying we don't yet know. And when you've only got two days to work it out, and you've, still, you've not had a chat with the board at that point about what's going to happen, it's just it's impossible to get that information out, which, which is respectful to the player who sat in front of you, who says the right, gives the right information to the supporters. And actually, the players we've signed, you've signed. So it's, if, 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 that's a, if that's a problem in terms of how that's reported, it's almost impossible to report it any better, because that's just the way it works. It's actually not a very satisfactory way of doing things because you have to give that by I think it's by the third week in May unless you get to the playoff final then you've got to do it a week after. I can't I can't tell you everything all the time honestly you know, unfortunately that's the way it is it's just sometimes you can't give that information and we do I think we do a damn good job of releasing information via the, the social media and I think that's really that's really improved over the last two or three years. Simon and Scott over here do a, a fabulous job of keeping that information going. It's just sometimes the reality is you can't give all the information all the time. And that's just the way it is, I'm afraid. Paul, do we ever get any interest from other clubs in David Wheeler? Plenty. Okay. Plenty, of, plenty of interest. But it's like any player. They're, you know, I hope all these players that we have, at some point, unless they're at the, at the stage <coughs> of their career where they're, 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 it's a different step, maybe like, like Dean's just made. But you, you hope all the players, be it an 18 year old or 26 year old, will go on to, to bigger things, be it with us or without us, and you hope everyone's a winner. You know, and and, and um, your best players are always going to be looked at by the clubs, always. Um, and of course, to put someone scores goals, even more so. So there's, there's plenty of interest, but then there's an interest that, yes, we like him, to, yes, we give you a bit of money to, yes, we'll give you enough money that we'll accept, and then maybe, you know, and also the players got to agree to go to that club. There have been interest in a lot of our players, but when it comes to a written offer or an email that lands on our desk, then we will deal with it. And those, that, that type of interest is not, is, is not as frequent as the interest which is just, we like him, and yeah. So it's, but yes, there has been interest, and but it has to be a, a, it has to be a figure if someone wants to buy a player, that suits everybody. There's three parties who always need to be us, the buying club, and the player. And often one of those three don't work. So you, you carry on. And uh, we're delighted that David's still with us. Um, yeah, obviously every year I'm developing well, I'm still, still class myself as, as a young player, at least for one more year. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, the amount of games I played last year helped a lot being settled in a back four and then having Tiz give me the encouragement and the, the coaching that I need to develop my game helped obviously Matt Taylor and Andy Tilson coming in being defenders that helped a lot whereas we didn't have that going back a couple of years so yeah I feel I'm developing into a into a nice comfortable player for League Two and hopefully I keep progressing the way I am and see where it takes me I've got another question while she's got the mic, Jordan. What do you think of, you came through the academy, what do you think of the current crop of older academy players who are coming through through now? Well, they're better than what, what I was. <laughs> <laughs> I think, Who's going to challenge you? <laughs> I think every year the, the lads coming through get better and better. And that's credit to the club with the, the players that they managed to attract. When I was when I first started the club as a nine-year-old, I think Plymouth was the go-to club. Whereas now, you speak to young kids, everyone wants to sign for Exeter City. And that that says a lot about the club. And as well, you get a chance here. There's no other team that you get a chance to to show showcase what you can do other than Exeter City, really. So 
I think that says a lot. I think the coaching that you get here shows in the players that are coming through. Just got to look at Ethan and Jack Sparks, who have just left school and capable enough to be playing in the Hawks first team. I can't say you've had that going back five, six years ago. So yeah, every year they develop and it's scary to think how good the nine roads are going to be when they're fit and able to play men's football. I think Jordan's been very modest. I think he's, I think he's, a, he's a fabulous player. And I think of all the players we've had come through the, the academy, I think Jordan's one of the best of them. It's not because he's, he's sat here. I just, don't think he, I just don't think he looks right what people think a centre-half should be to play in the championship. Because I think if he was Spanish, he'd probably be playing for you know, the, in the top league. But I think in this country, to be a centre-back, they, they, they tend to think you need to be six foot three and be a bit ungainly. And, and, you know, but he's got a lot more. And actually, football's not that, not that complicated, or people don't think it is. And I think Jordan's been very modest. I think he's certainly comfortable playing League Two, if not League One, if not the Championship. He just doesn't look like a Championship centre-half, sadly. But actually, I think he's better than most of them. And, and I think we've had so many good players coming through the, the academy, and it's. I think it's. There's, there's a number of number of um, reasons why the production line is speeding up with, with better quality players. It's the mean average. It's not the odd one or two because we've had terrific players who've come through before. Dean and George Friend, and you could keep going back. And there's always the Liam Circus. We've lots of good players that come through, but now it's the quantity of them, and it's the mean average. It's not just one. It's there's a number every year. So that average is going up and up and up. But it's, it all comes back to that commitment to do it. And you hear so many clubs say, we're, go, we're, go, we're, we're, we're going for a youth policy. It takes years. It takes 10 years to even get to the starting line. 10 years. You can't do it in one or two years because you've got to attract the nine-year-olds. And you only attract the nine-year-olds when the parents are convinced that that club is right for their young chap and they're going to spend four nights a week there through their teens and then they're going to get to a first team <coughs> decision, then they're going to get made a professional and they get to that point, they get to 19, 20, it's not all been a waste of time because the manager will play them if they're good enough. And not only will he play them, but when they're in a bad time, he'll stick with them and keep playing them like we did with Ollie Watkins when he had his ups and downs. And you only do that if you commit. And on the back of that commitment, the academy then have the confidence to do it. And it's led from the board right the way through and everyone commits to it. And that's why it takes 10 years. And you get and Jordan's absolutely right. There is no other choice now but to go to Exeter City if you're in the southwest. Because you know it's the right environment, the right culture, and when it comes to the crunch, you get selected. And a player leaves, and before the club looks to buy another player or sign a player, they look to their own players first. It's not another club that does it, not another club that comes close. And that's why, and, and Jordan was very modest about, Jordan is one of those one per year that we had. The difference is now we've got more Jordans, but there's more, they're more plentiful. And they're, they're all left footed, so now. But they, <laughs> <laughs> they're all left footed, I don't know why, they're all left footed. Jean is a bit modern up tonight. So we, 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 are, we are very lucky to have that, to have that commitment. And you ought to let the coaching or the opportunity, but if you, if you commit, it goes right through the club. And that's the reason. And that's, that's, that is the beauty and the upside of our model. So there's some parts that are very frustrating, there are other parts that are enormously rewarding and satisfying, and that's one of them, and it needs to be said. Can I ask another question? Ladies and gentlemen, I'll come back to you. There's a question for Dean and for you, Paul, as well. Um, when you left Exeter, was it a massive step up? going to Derby, fitness wise, technically, and now coming back, Paul, what does Dean bring to the club with that experience? Um, yeah, it was a big step up for me personally. Um, I, felt, I felt ready to challenge myself when I left. I think it was the right time to leave. Um, Paul offered me a deal to stay, but he, he never stood in my way. He, he said if it never worked, out at Derby, you were always welcome back here, so it was it was good for me to actually challenge myself. I, I went there and uh, Nigel Clough said I wouldn't be first choice during pre-season and uh, I think uh, Jay McEvely was going to be first pick and then it came to the first game of the season and I, I was up on the team sheet to play against Peter Brand. Uh, it, was, it was one of those where he just sort of chucked me in, he didn't even tell me leading up to the game, it was, I was expecting to be on the bench and 
try and work myself into the team. And yeah, it was it was it was a good challenge, and I'm I'm glad I've I've done it. Uh, I pushed on. Uh, I left Derby and went to Palace and pushed on to the Premier League, and that was fantastic for me to to be able to say I've I've played in the Premier League. That's that's what every young boy wants to do, and I was lucky to do it. And um, yeah, I just I'm just grateful for the opportunities I've been been given. So. I think it goes without saying what Dean brings back, who we all know him as a player and he's a left sided player, so it boosts the left hand side and well, I think I think Dean will lead by example and he's had that experience of um, a challenging level, the clubs he's been at previous in the last sort of, uh, seven or eight years. And you know, when you've been involved with that environment, you come back and you know, I, as a manager I'm hoping that Dean will, will set the bar. And, and don't forget there's quite a few of our players that play that level. But I think the difference from when Dean left, apart from the mud and everything else that was, <laughs> the shower's not working and all that sort of thing, that they have, have developed and improved a lot. The difference is, again, come back to that mean average. Our squad is strong. You know, Dean, we had 16 with me today at first team training, and that was a strong 16. There was no one in there that was weak. No one in there that's letting the, the, the average down. And that's the difference. If you go back 10 years ago, there wouldn't be 16 players who were all perfectly capable of playing the team on Saturday and would be disappointed if they're not. So that average has gone up gradually. And Dean comes in and he just nudges it again, and that's what we've got to do. And he's, he's an Exeter boy, he wants to play for Exeter, and you know, the bottom line is come back to commitment. You can't, you can't necessarily quantify all those things, but when someone wants to play for the club, they want to come back to the club, they've got Exeter in their, in their system, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, something in there which just adds something. I'm sure you'd all agree. I just want to go to, I'm glad that you signed for him. Um, I know he's been out 16 months with this bad injury. Now, with the sign of him, is it a gamble? Is his, in, is his injury okay? Or is it? Yeah, he's, he's been out a long time. No, we have to, we have to, we have to get context on this. You know, we haven't got the ability to go out and just cherry pick someone because the cost of that is prohibitive. We've got to, we've got to do it the Exeter way, and we've done it a number of times, the likes of Dave Noble or other players who have come here because of circumstances. And players <coughs> that I've liked and seen, and suddenly there's an opportunity that raises its head and you go for it. And we've had a month to look at him, he's a very, very committed and uh, hard working and very competent player. He's not his best yet, he will be over the next couple of months and his expectation of him should be he's going to get there and he's capable of playing that but he's not his best yet, he's been out for a year and I'm, I'm surprised Plymouth haven't kept him but I say probably they've gone up a league and they can do what they want but circumstances are, I'm more than happy for him to come in and compete and again he, he, he keeps that mean average of our side going forward and he's the type of player that in League 1, League 2 we need Robbie Simpson still coming back from that horrific injury. I mean, he's way ahead of schedule. I mean, he'd have the injury he had. You look at normally look at nine to twelve months, and he's back in five months running around. Well, I think it's unfair to ask him to 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 to, to be that that player that I signed him for just yet. So we need strength in numbers. So, um, but like a, like a lot of, a lot of business with Exeter, we don't go and cherry pick the player that's just played forty games and scored twenty goals. We have to find someone that needs us as much as we need them. Then we get the value and then we help them along the way and then... Yeah, I'm not knocking it, I'm just... I know you're, doing, you're very supportive of it, but he, he, I think our expectation needs to be, he's, he's, he's ready to play, but it, it'll take him four, five, six months to get back to his best, and I'm sure, and he's, he's ready for it, so... Um, obviously, Ryan Brunt signing is, because Tyler Harvey, he's also been training with Is he signing as well, do you know, or...? Um, I, not at the moment, because there's nothing, nothing to report on that. Um, and I certainly wouldn't speak here before I spoke to him. Okay. So which would be wholly unfair. But um, yeah, it, it's my job to see what's out there and have a look and try to get the best of a, of a situation and get the very best for Exeter, at the best value and the best players, and, and I'll continue to do that. But I, I don't think it's right to comment here before I've had that conversation with him. No, fair uh, any ideas on the 1931 player? Yeah, we're sort, of, we're sort of in the middle of that, and 
again, coming back to the whole reporting thing, it's very difficult to give information when it's, you know, you want to do things in it. So we're, we're pretty close to it, and um, it's a slight, we'll see. You're, hopefully in the next seven days, you'll get some report on that. It's a very important thing for us. It just gives us that, it gives us something we wouldn't ordinarily have had. It's always the difference. You know, we're not talking big sums of money, but it, every bit helps, and it just makes the difference. So I'm hoping that will be something we can conclude, hopefully before Saturday, actually. Um, and, uh, yeah. So I can't be any more. That's why it's good, man. That's good, man. We're well aware of it. We want to make the most of it. So what is a 1931? Kind of there's a, there's a, for everyone's benefit, the 1931 fund stroke player was a, the 31 shirt worn by a player who has a contract funded by, or part funded by, a group of people who, the 19, 1931 club, who put money into the club to help make that signing. Um, and anyone like to tell me exactly why it's called the 1931 club? Because I had a blank on that. I'm sure someone can tell me. Sunderland. He played Sunderland in the uh, FA Cup. In 1931. Quarter five. Yeah. Quarter five. So it's 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 it's, it's through that history and it's a nice name. And Alan Crockford is, I believe Alan Crockford is the is the, the one who who leads that. And I think he's been. We've the players we've had on that that Pierce Sweeney last year. We couldn't sign him for that 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 funding. Joel Grant before that. In the past, we've had um, Norwood, who's now, uh, who's now playing, James Norwood, who's now playing at, um, at Tranmere. So we've had a number of players, but obviously the, the, the most recent was Pierce Sweeney and Joel Grant, but Pierce last year came in through from Reading, and that was the difference which enabled us to sign him. So it's, it's a really vital part of our, of our funding. Well, just a bit of uh, ground new development. Is everything on target, still on schedule? Well, we'd we like to... David, would you like to the opportunity just to give everyone a uh, sort of summary of where we are? I think it's probably a good idea, actually. It's a nice, it's a good question. It's There's actually going to be a, an update on the, um, the website. Um, Scott, is that going on tomorrow? Yeah. I've done, what we've been, if you've been looking at the website, what we've been doing is showing a series of photographs and a short description underneath. What I've done now is written a, a bigger update of where we are. Um, things are going very well. It's uh, actually ahead of program, but as I've said on the update, it is a construction contract and there's always a chance that we'll, get, we'll hit something unexpectedly and an unexpected delay, but at the moment, if things go according to plan, we are hoping to be using the new changing rooms which are being built under the stand back here in, uh, towards the end of September. Uh, at that time then, the <coughs> land behind the big bank transfers to the developer and we can start knocking the stand down on the other side. Um, the away end is going really well. The bases for the new stand are already in and concreted. You'll have seen what we've done with the wall to St James's Road. That's been reduced to the height that it's designed to, and we're now starting to put the fence along the top of that. So that's coming on well. The big bank toilets, which are just out the back there, um, they're being handed over to us in middle of August, on the 10th of August. You will have seen we've put the um, turnstiles back and the new gate, the gate that's been refurbished, and we put some temporary stern turnstiles at the bottom of the ramp for the big bank because we won't be using the jungle path um, once work starts on, on the other side. It's going well. Is there any wood about? That's wood, isn't it? It's going well. And, uh, I'm hoping that we'll finish ahead of the program. At the moment, the program doesn't give us a new stand back until part way into next season. I think unless things go exceptionally well, that will still be the case. But the time that we are without it, could we should. I'll take any questions if you're on. What about floodlights? We <laughs> 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 We did, we did have a bit of a problem trying to solve the temporary floodlight arrangement because you'll appreciate once we knock the stand down, we're going to lose the lights. That problem has now been solved, providing we get planning permission. What you'll see is we're going to put an 18 metre tower, a temporary tower, back on the corner of the away end of the old grandstand, and eight new lights are going to be fixed to the top of the, the big bank stand. Uh, so they will get us through the uh, period when we haven't got the stand up. We've got lead dispensation for a slightly lower light level. We've 
you've got the 350 lux instead of a 500 lux. I have no idea whether you're going to be able to see the difference, but that's what we've done. Um, and the new the permanent arrangement, when the stand's put back up and the lights are refixed, the 18 metre tower comes down and we just cut the ground over, but the lights on the big bank will stay there. Yeah, we haven't told you that, you can't see the ball once you're in the program. I think it's fair to say that this is this is not an ordinary development. You know, it's not a case of this is ours and we've got pot money and we can choose what we want. It's been a political and strategic masterpiece from David, although he stood there, to actually get there's so many different parties involved and the venture requires so many relationships being struck and the legal documents that are needed to make sure everyone's happy has been it's been quite a piece of work. I'm not, I wouldn't even start to explain it to you, but we got to this point. It's actually one of the one of the best sort of most sort of I think um, impressive bits of business we've done at the club over a long, long time. So we're there. David's right. Touch wood. We are going to get a little bit of you know. It's going to be an odd year seeing that stand come down at some point, seeing the different lights, seeing the big fence go around, all that's all, it's going to be a little bit odd, but the, the end of it will be another step towards Rexford to see. The one thing to say about it is that it was a very complex deal, could not have been achieved without the, the, the support that we have from Mexico City Council, who were superb all the way through. Because all we're paying for is the away end, the, the rest of it is the scrappy old bit of ground out there that we park our cars on, we've given up a four year lease on that, and for that we're getting new changing rooms, we're getting a new stand, we're getting uh, some of the away because we're not paying for all of it. So, in my terminology, it was a blinding deal. <laughs> so it's not as impressive as the new 13 kit. <laughs> <laughs> Three years ago, we spoke about having purple with a bit of red and a bit of yellow. That's far more impressive, but David, it's not a bad effort. <laughs> <laughs> Dean wore that yeah. kit at Wembley. Yeah. Dean wore that kit, one of our favourites. Is that one of your favourites? <laughs> and you know the kit? Yeah. Um, can we do like a whole white kit? So when it's like all sunny, and we're like, like hot, yeah. the um, sun will bounce off the white, and it won't make us that hot. Yeah. <laughs> charge of the new design of the new kit, but you have to run that past Lou, the kit lady, because she has to wash the white shorts. <laughs> so you have a chat with Lou about that, okay? And then you come up with a decision, mate. Talking about the grand, yeah. what, what do you think the impact's going to be on the, on the sort of playing on just on two sides? With, with, with just on two sides. I mean, we've speculated about it all, all summer, actually. And we've actually trained here three or four times because I'm very conscious of the fact that it feels different. Now, the, the optics of standing in the middle of a pitch and looking out, it does have an impact on the pace of the game and the distances. Now, we've got, we've got a pitch that's slightly longer than the average in our league, but definitely narrower than the average. So we've got the, a long pitch, but a narrow pitch. And that does have an effect on the way we play. And that's... that's that's um, something we looked into when we, you know, we, we practice according, according to our sizes. But one thing about Exeter City, St James's Park, you stand in the centre circle and you look around the ground and no view is the same as the next. You know, you, you play at, at Wembley and it's a complete bowl and, and it, the optics are very different. Actually what this ground has, when you stand on the centre spot and you look towards the big bank, it looks a, a much bigger pitch than if you turn around and look at the way end and that's purely optics. And what we now have is we now have a way and we have a, a, a board right behind the goal, which makes it feel even smaller. It's not it's exactly the same size, although we did find out when we put the new pitch down seven years ago that one end of the pitch was slightly wider than the other end. So <laughs> and why we probably scored more goals at one end, because it was funneled in. But since then, the pitch is now the right shape. 
Um, but we have, you look that end, it's different. And we've been out here, we've practiced, haven't we, Jordan, a few times. We've lost a few balls over that, over that fence already. So what do you think? Uh, we lost, we lost Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I don't think it'll make too much of a difference. Obviously, when you're away, it's not. We have a small section in the corner, and everyone else is giving you a lot of abuse. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think it'll make too much difference. Obviously, you, when you grow up as kids, you have your parents sit on the side, and that's about it. So everyone's used to playing in front of one side, two sides. I think as long as as long as we we understand it's just a pitch, every pitch is albeit size difference has still got two penalty errors, seven spot, two goals at the end. So you can't think into it too much, you've just got to go out and play football on a pitch with two goals, two penalty errors. <laughs> 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 so we'll find out, we'll actually know, what, what we'll be on is walking out on Saturday on that side with no one there and then standing in the, I'm not sure whether I'm going to like it or loathe it, being still in that dugout over there with no one behind it, it'd be very, it'll be, it'd be odd. But actually what's important on the pitch and let's hope we, we get the result we need, whatever happens. Well, the pitch is looking superb at the moment and it was the receiver that on purpose or...? It's all about time and opportunity, so the, 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 the wisdom at the moment football pitches and if you go to a top training ground every pitch looks like it's been stripped to nothing every summer what they do is they take the top layer off they don't actually they do put a new seat there, but they're not actually starting again what they do is they take the top couple of centimeters off and you, and you take all the stuff away what it does it leaves in the healthy roots it takes all the weak roots away so you're left with what looks like a, just a just a beach what you have got is you've got all the healthy roots still underneath and they put a bit of seed down. What comes through is actually the strong, healthy grass. You don't start again, necessarily. It was just purely, I think, a time. <coughs> of it costs money. And, and when you do St James' Park, we do it at a level which is, needs to be done as, as much, as well as we can afford. But this year, we just, the time was difficult. You know, going to Wembley and the playoffs, and it looks wonderful, but it's not had, and what you normally get, you normally get quite a... <coughs> A pitch that's not quite ready in, in the first week in August. It, it's ready to play, it's not quite strong. But over the August, September, October, it's still going to get very strong. We've got that strength now. But I think oh, if, you did that, if you did that every year, it would start to weaken. So we do need to do that beach look again. Because you think, well, have they done that? The pitch is great. But you need to do it to keep it healthy. And that's sort of modern, conventional wisdom, really. And it, it does make a difference. But at the moment, we didn't do it time and everything else, it is what it is, it's a, it's a nice <coughs> picture from last year. It's in very good condition. Is part of the Watkins money going to go in to update and that for you guys? And I know you wanted it a little because it's... I want a lot. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> and and it, it's, it's a good question. You know, that money drops in and there's, it's not just the football team, it's not just the <coughs> training ground, there's, there's working capital at the club. You know, the, the development and future developments and there's so much that's needed to even stand still and maintain the floodlights. We all need a bit of it. We all need more than we can get. And the, the point is we have to work together to use it and have a, have, a, have a considered approach to how we spend our money. It'd be very, it'd be lovely to take all that money and build a new pavilion, put it all into the team. But that's, it's, it's bit by bit. You know, it's, there was a moment in time when it was right to get the 3G facility and that's been wonderful. And we have to wait for the next moment in time. And yes, we need a new pavilion. But we need to grow more than that. It's not just replacing it. We've got to increase and expand and improve our facilities. Because, you know, you have to do that. Otherwise, standing still, put, actually, you go backwards. And it makes a difference. Dean's already spoke about the facilities when he's walked through the door. When he's coming in in July, they tell you it's still be muddy, in, unfortunately, in January. But, it just, it's, it's, but it's ten times better than it was. Um, but we do need new facilities. But we need it everywhere. You know, the, the commercial team need new offices and the, the, the groundsman needs more equipment and it goes, it goes, it goes on. But we, we, we're always going to be compromised some way or another, unfortunately. Nice question. Um, we've had, we've had um, a few games. I think it's the first thing is you never quite know how the, the, the form and the, and the games transfer into the start of the season. Last year we won every game 1-0, didn't concede a goal, and then go back and lose 2-0. 
So, and I've been, I've been doing this for so long now, it's so hard to plot. If there was one way of doing it, we'd all do it. But the point is, you want as many players fit as possible, focused and ready to go on the first game of the season. Okay, we've played against non-league teams because we weren't able to play here. So we weren't able to have a game here because of the work going on and health and safety. So we had to go away from home. And actually, we've got to get the right between the players need a, a break from the intensity. So they had this, they, 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 I mean, it's the most exhausting season you could imagine last year. But just the effort we put in to claw ourselves back. And then to get to Wembley, I cannot describe to you the effort went in. So to then, me, to hit them with the intensity stick straight away, in mean, the first couple of weeks of returning for pre-season just would not have been fair. So I asked them to get fit, run around, play, make some mistakes, try and, try and out new things. We did get more focused on Saturday in terms of what we need to do going forward at uh, Dorchester, but really now proofs in the pudding. And I don't think we'll get it all right straight away, but really we have to be fit, physically fit and technically fit, but actually we needed a break mentally because you just cannot, you cannot just keep going at that type of level. But I think it's been very good so far. Um, I, 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 maybe I'll ask Jordan again now to describe where he thinks we are for the new, new season ahead. I think as players are ready to go, I think obviously you can't think too much into pre-season. As, as Tiz said, everything went smoothly last pre-season. We got results, kept clean sheets and went to Blackpool and it didn't, didn't work out for us. So I think as, as a group of players, you do always have an eye on the first game of the season. That is, that is what you look forward to. You can't. You can't go full to it to a tackle during pre-season because in yourself, even getting, getting sent off in a pre-season game, so you miss, you miss so that is at the, the back of your mind without even meaning, meaning for it to be. So I think, I think we're ready, we've had a, a, a tough pre-season, albeit the games have been, been as tough as last year, the training has been a lot tougher, so we've, we've made up for it that way, until now all the players are raring to go. Three points here on Saturday. <laughs> Phil, this is Phil. Who, know, who doesn't know Phil? I've seen Phil. I mean, he's been here three times, training on this pitch over the last few. And every time, there's this character stood at the top of the big bank, painting the reds. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been up. I've been up. I've been up there. And I said, like, "Who is this chap? He's there." And I know there was a working party that got through about a quarter or a third of the big bank. And then there's one character that carried on. There was just one chap in the sun painting away, and I went up to him last week, and it's, it's Phil. Um, he, he asked, could he have a day off to go to the Oval to watch the cricket? <laughs> <laughs> Did it rain? No, I had a lovely day to play on the Friday. Yeah. Yeah. So he, yeah. he, he, got, he got lucky. I did say he had to work extra hard when he got back. Um, <laughs> is it being finished, Phil? It's all finished, yeah. It's all finished. Thank you very much. <laughs> And I'll just go into another one. There's no easy games anymore. The, the 50 odd years I've played, it'll always just be some with the old beaten and easy. It doesn't happen anymore. But who do you see, perhaps, if you could select the three main competitors? Uh, Good three? question. Good question. I'd have to say Mansfield is one, that they'll be very competitive, just because I know how hard their manager pushes, pushes his owner for new signings and how, how much he pushes his team. and. They've got they've got a very physically strong team. I think he's he, he's he's a he's a shrewd operator. I think they'll be they'll be tough this year. Um, you have to you have to look at the likes of Luton. Those with a with a with a, a strong budget, we believe, and, and be able to sign players like Jack Stacey. When you know you'd have to you'd have to push for for, for someone like Luton to be strong. Um, you, you often get an underdog, like we had Accrington a couple of years ago, just shot, shot up through and found a rhythm and found something that sort of worked and, and, they, and they, the wheels were turning and they were just almost unbeatable for a while. So you, you always wait for that type of team. Um, so let's ask, I mean, Jordan's played against, and that's, there's, there's two nominations I've just given. Do you want to offer an opinion who you've played against who you think this year would be a tough team to beat? <laughs> Cambridge, who we play Saturday, I think with the signings they've got and the way we're hearing from players that play with players there, how they're going to play, very direct style, and the players they've signed. Too much away. The players they've signed. <laughs> <laughs> the players they've signed are, are big loves. So. Four four two, and we're 
work at a time. <laughs> <laughs> um, obviously, this year you haven't got your, your Portsmouth, so you know we're going to be up here. Donkers, I think Coventry again and Swindon. They'll be up there, they'll be looking to bounce back and respond from this one last year. I think, like I said, any, any team starts the season with with the aim to be successful. And as long as you get your rhythm right, you, you tend to be up there. So I think I think anyone anyone could could well be up there. You don't look at any any team and think, yeah, they're gonna struggle. So I think we go to every game knowing it's gonna be a it's gonna be a tough game and it's gonna be very hard work to get the three points we need. Team selection. I'm playing different teams. Now, obviously, Plymouth have got out. Is that a disappointment or a relief? We're not going to be playing. <laughs> <laughs> I think you always enjoy those games. The bigger the game, the better. I think it's one less headache, especially off the field. I mean, it's not. Let, let, let's let's talk, let's think about the football later. But actually, off the field, you know, the whole the whole preparation for those games and the, the involvement with the police and the organisation and and that's the headache. I mean, one there's the you know there's the gate seats we get from those games, but a lot of that goes back to the police for, for what they charge. But we don't choose the police bills. The police choose the police bills. So there's all that sort of thing to consider. We are playing, of course, in the um, check and trade trophy. Um, we are playing there, but we miss the games. But it's also a headache. But it is what it is. I think. I, I think the one thing you do, you spin the positives in your mind. You're, 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 purposeful about the season you have and you don't worry too much about what's not in front of you, get on with it. So we haven't thought hardly anything about it to be honest. We've got 23 teams we're up against and we're going to get stuck into them. Going back to development, especially the way end, um, what prize are you going to give to the first player to take off one of those wings on the sports? I saw that the other day, what are the little tips that come off the top? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I hope not one of our players got missing the target by that much, because they're about 20 yards away from the top, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll have no prizes for that. Uh, <laughs> I think Pierce Swing is probably the final. Sorry? After his goal on the Sorry? After his goal on the Saturday. That's for the ribbon he got the week earlier, sticking over that fence. <laughs> that was cross. <laughs> Um, so what's your feelings on the Jack Tra Trophy games this year? Maybe some of the changes to make it a little bit easier for to have maybe younger players or players who haven't played in the league. How do you feel about those changes? I think as a manager you want to, you want to get something positive from any situation and that trophy um, does give you an opportunity to, <coughs> to blood a younger player or, or try something new. And what's, and what's been prohibited before in the past is the, the conditions they put on the team you have to select. There's been a big change in that. Um, you can have There've always been a stipulation on the amount of players you've played in the week before or the week you play afterwards, and you have to have a certain amount of players. That's changed slightly. There's less players involved in that condition, and also there's another condition which allows you to play uh, players who might not be in the team but have got a certain level of experience. It's quite a complicated list of conditions. So all I can do is, is approach what we have in our calendar ahead of us, of which that's part of the calendar, and I'd like to take the opportunity to dependent on fitness and availability in the squad to to use that the best I can. And there's no point no point, you know, sort of making that a hardship for the team. We've got to see it in the positive. I remember last year playing at Oxford and Matt Jay scored a great goal and some of the great Matt Small come playing and Alex Byrne playing. And it was a great experience for them. And Ethan Ampadu came off the bench with lots of young players on that pitch. And I'd like to think we can we can again, you know, get the very most out of that particular uh, tournament we have and uh, yeah, keep my fingers crossed that you know, we can make the most of it. In the time that you've been here, have you changed your coaching methods at all? Or, and if so, have, uh, is that based on anybody else's sort of opinions or have you just basically kept the same as you? I think it's changed. I think it changes all the time. It, without even a conscious decision, you, you have to. It, it, what was what was you know good coaching 15 years ago? We're still good coaching, but everything else has moved. You've got to, you've got to, and what is the best coaching this year? Necessarily won't be the best coaching in ten, in, in ten years' time. You, you've got to be, try and be one step ahead. You'll be too far ahead. Nobody will follow you. You know, they're looking at the So you've got, to, you've got to be careful. You don't start coming up with too many ideas. But it, it just gradually evolves. And 
and it evolves with the, the, the two main factors are the facilities you play on, the ability to pass the ball or get stuck in the mud or whatever it might be. So the, 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 the facilities and the, quality, the mean average of the players you have. So just based on those two factors, everything else is, everything else is, is, uh, is moved on. So the players fitter, stronger, I'd hope, and, and, and more of them, and more, better, and more players are capable of doing certain things. I'd like to think, on the coaching side of the academy, the first team, that we've all done the same. But uh, that's, of course, a subjective. It's not a burning question at all. It's just to ask Jordan and Dean who they think is their hardest team they've ever played against. Um, you know, just as a sort of end of session thing, really. The hardest team I played was Dean's Crystal Palace on my debut playing against Wilfred Zaha and as an 18 year old boy. That was some experience. I don't even know that the hardest team. Uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of teams I could pick, but. Um, <laughs> no, I think uh, when I played against Arsenal, that was that was a very hard day for me. They had uh, Mesut Ozil up against me, so it was, I had to concentrate for a long time. Very long time. <laughs> well, I have to, have to say thank you very much for um, the reception you've given. Dean Gordon and myself, I have a good evening from here. More importantly, we have a good experience on Saturday and going through the rest of the season. So thank you very much for your support. Uh, on behalf of all of us, I think we all want to wish you uh, all the best for the new season, starting off with three points against Cambridge United uh, on Saturday. I know it's going to be a fabulous atmosphere here, even with uh, a couple of sides of the ground, not for the spectators. But once again, let's hear it tonight for Dean, the JMT, and Mr. <laughs>